Hi there, this is um, a quick introduction to XML. XML is something you're aware of, I would imagine, you know, so far in your course you've, you've come across it at least a couple of times. Um, so XML, what is it short for? It's short for Extensible Markup Language. Uh, and effectively, it's a meta-language for creating customized tags for specific data which sounds very grandiose, but effectively it means you can create your own tags unlike HTML uh, and it's usually used for data exchange. And it was created specifically for the web and it's kind of become the de facto international standard for data exchange, although by no means the only one. Um, it's, not, it's designed for handling data, um, so it's not really designed to do anything, it's purely used for data storage and data exchange and it allows you to represent data as you want. It's used in lots of ways, it's used in a mathematical markup language, it's used for financial exchange, RSS news feeds, a lot of components, .NET, uh, Eclipse, a, a lot of components use XML as the kind of internal format for communication between the components and iTunes uses it as the structure of its library, information about the titles of songs, where they're located, how long they are, etc. Uh, and XHTML is also a version of, in a way, HTML, or it, it's a similar sort of standard that derived from a common parent. Um, and XHTML applies XML standards to HTML documents, so XML, like XHTML, must be well formed and it conforms to the same set of uh, rules. Um, it's particularly useful with regard to data exchange because on different computer systems uh, with different databases they often contain information in incompatible formats even on a simple level of having different field names uh, for information that might actually be the same uh, and frequently in different computer systems data needs to be exchanged you know a supplier needs to place an order or a client needs to place an order or one system needs to send information to another one um, and that problem XML is a solution in some part to that problem because we can convert data to XML and XML since it's just a text file can then be read and parsed and, and stored and so it makes it much easier to uh, transport and exchange data a large number of systems today obviously need that capability. They exchange data and a lot of companies now do that using data stored in XML. Um, so we can take orders def taken by one company, goods shipped by another, and the two companies can use XML to exchange information. Okay. Um, a lot of databases these days actually natively provide the facility to export as XML but if they don't it's very easy to do. So insofar as you know XHTML better than you know XML let's look at some of the uh, similarities and differences. Uh, in HTML you can only use the tags defined by the HTML standard like H1 or P or BR or OL whereas in XML there are no predefined tags you must define your own set of tags. Um, HTML do something, they, they display, you know, even things like strong. It increasingly, obviously, with XHTML, there's a move towards those, to make those tags um, be semantically rich rather than to be to do with display, but nonetheless, there's an element where that is still true, less true with HTML5. But XML, the tags only describe what that something is. That's the example here, like something is a module. XML is about storing data, whereas HTML, HTML is more about displaying data. XHTML is, whilst it can be about displaying data, is also a bit more about uh, storing data and having a semantic meaning to things. So let's look at uh, a basic example. Uh, the first line denotes that it's XHTML document and it 
also specifies which version of the XHTML standard is being applied. And then there is always a root element of some description uh, with a matching close tag. So here we've got modules at the start and then an end modules, within which, in this particular example, we've got lots of module elements. And each module element, in turn, contains other uh, fields, let's call them code and title. Um, all tags in XHTML, except that opening uh, dot type in a way, the version declaration, must be closed. Even empty tags must be closed. So the same as with uh, uh, XHTML, you either close the tag, as in title, end title, or you self-close with title, space, forward slash. Um, and, you know, where have you seen this uh, rule applied? Well, obviously enough in XHTML. So let's look at another example. So here we've not only got which version of XML we're using, but also we're specifying what character encoding we're using so that it will allow certain uh, accented characters, etc. And in this one, you know, it's, there's a recipe as the root element, which has got a name and, and ingredients, and, there are, and then there are various ingredients. So think of that. Let's look at the relationships of those particular elements, name, ingredients, and then ingredient. So the recipe is obviously the root element. And then the name and the ingredients, was the name and ingredients, are on the same level. So they're siblings of each other. Um, ingredients also happens to be a parent. It's a parent of the ingredient elements. And there are more than one ingredient element, and they are children of each other, siblings of each other rather, but children of the uh, ingredients element, the parent element. So we can think of this kind of relationship in various ways. Here's another example. We've got modules and then various modules. We can either think of it as a hierarchy or perhaps as a tree, depending on which is more helpful as a hierarchy. We've got modules as the root element, which contains module, and there's more than one of those. So what the dot, dot, dot at the bottom of this slide means it means continue in the ellipsis. And within module, uh, inside the hierarchy, there's a code element which has a particular data item, like CG119, or a particular title. Or we can think of that same structure in terms of a tree, if it's more helpful, where we've got a root and then branches off that a module, and inside module there are branches off that of code and of title. You can think of it in either way. Now, in addition to elements which hold data, Elements can also have attributes to hold additional information. So, uh, for example, we could express that top version in the lower version form. We could say module, instead of giving a separate element for code, we could make it an attribute of module instead, say code equals something. Uh, in actual fact, we could make all of them uh, attributes instead of elements. And there are certain advantages to that, although there are a lot more disadvantages. So attributes can do the same thing as basic elements. Um, but if you're trying to choose between the two, then you need to keep in mind that elements can be more complex than attributes. An element can contain nested or child elements. It can also contain more complex data types. Uh, whereas attributes can only have a single, simple text value, since they're always enclosed in quotes. And if you have too many attributes, it can make a document much harder to read. Um, so you, you shouldn't really try and specify the structure of a document. It's better to specify the structure of a document using elements. You really should be using, if you use them at all, you should use attributes to indicate additional information about something. In some uh, XML elements, we might want those elements to contain more complex data. And in the same way as with XHTML, we can't use certain characters 
if we want to use certain characters like ampersand or less than or greater than or or even the pound sign depending on what character entity character set you're using then you I've either got to convert them to their character entity equivalent so instead of ampersand we'll use ampersand amp semicolon or instead of less than we'll use ampersand LT semicolon or we enclose the data in that less than exclamation mark square bracket c data square bracket and close it with square bracket square bracket greater than in actual fact you've seen that before it's the usually you put it inside javascript um, because it stops your javascript being interpreted as html when you're validating it it means that what follows is character data and is then excluded from the rules that otherwise apply to XHTML and XML documents. Um, these days, uh, most web browsers, in fact, I think all recent web browsers have XML parsers built in. So if you um, send an XML document to a browser, it will actually represent it in a different way, not just as text, but as structured data. Um, they can't interpret the data currently, um, and there are ways to do that because there is a lot of other technology around uh, XML, but they can at least display the data. So the advantage of XML is it's simple. It's an open standard and it's independent of either platform or vendor. It's extensible since we can make up tags and it separates content from presentation in a very extreme way. It's got nothing to do with the presentation at all. And it's very useful with regard to the integration of data from multiple sources and for the transportation of data between systems. Um, because in a way, the web especially you know increasingly so with HTML5 is the ultimate in interoperable databases of you know complex data um, it has certain disadvantages there are other types of uh, other formats that allow for data exchange one is JSON and JSON is less verbose than uh, XML since JSON doesn't have tags that indicate start and close tags that indicate the uh, the field so you save a bit of, uh, of uh, file size from transporting there are a lot of xml technologies um, there is simple xml which we'll use in actual fact in a couple of weeks time in php it's extraordinarily simple to use there's something called sax uh, simple api for xml it's also available as an add-in in PHP. And there's the DOM, which you've come across before, the document object model, which is specifically available also in PHP. And then there are kind of not related to PHP specifically, but separate technologies. XSLT, which is an extensible star sheet language transformations. And that's used in actual fact quite a lot to take data and transform it in output. Um, in actual fact, I've used this sort of for real in inverted commas once because I used to get um, file downloads from my bank in one particular format uh, and my uh, wife used to have data downloads in a different format and they didn't supply any transformation and I used XSLT to transform from one format to another so I could import it into my uh, accounts package. Um, XPath is like a query language for XML and we'll use that and then there's an even more specific query language called XQuery. Uh, by the way we won't look at XSLT and we won't look at XQuery but we will look into XPath and we will use simple XML and then in actual fact you can be more precise in XML and, and use schemas and DTDs document type definitions to be more specific about the type of data and the ranges uh, and uh, data types that the that, that your XML document will hold so in summary XML is become the de facto standard for data exchange the XML tags describe something uh, it's got hierarchical or tree structure and there are actually now XML databases that exist in even ordinary databases um, can export data as XML. 
There are lots of information out there about XML. Um, these books are now getting a bit old. Any search will find more recent ones. And as ever, any search on the web will find you a lot of tutorials. In the workshops, the workshops are self-contained. You just start on page one and carry on to you know, page four or five, and uh, that will cover everything that you need. Hope that's useful. All right.